What's up guys, this is Seth from Darkwater's Fly Shop here with another video for you today, kind of tutorial status and something that I wanted to let you guys know about, uh, which is kind of crazy. I've been slacking on my uh, uploads lately. If you go back to like the end of January through February, I've been slacking hard, but uh, I got a good excuse. I was dealing with seven kidney stones, dead serious, seven kidney stones, um, down to five. I've got three on my right and two on my left. So, um, yeah, send your prayers my way. That's definitely uh, needed. So, this is what we got going on today. This episode is going to be all about streamers. You guys are already familiar with the videos that I've done with the sync tips, how I make them, but I'm uh, going to describe how I fish them in this episode as well. So, uh, let's get to it. All right, folks, um, what I have here are my top four favorite streamers, starting at the bottom. I don't know where I would start, to be honest. These all are my favorite streamers. I, You know what? Forget it. We're not going to number them. We're just going to go through them because uh, <laughs> in any situation, one of them might be better than the other. So let's just start with the biggest and we'll go down to the smallest. Um, the biggest streamers that I'm using, and this is uh, the mini Drunken Disorderly by Tommy Lynch. Um, these are money. Uh, they've got a rattle on the inside of them. And uh, the thing is, a lot of people are going to argue about whether or not that rattle does anything. I don't really care. This is an extremely productive fly based on the fact of its erratic movement. Uh, the head on this thing, the wedge head that this thing has, um, causes it to respond much like if you know, uh, like crankbaits, a husky jerk. So that's in white. This is in like an olive color as well. So uh, that's kind of where I have, I threw these so much this year. You can get the regular size drunken disorderlies, which are, you know, anywhere from six, they're probably like five, six inches long. This is probably going to be three, four inches long. I love them. Um, I've caught brook trout on them. I catch, you know, I've caught, I've caught uh, kings have hit these things. I mean, seriously, there have been um, just awesome, awesome fishing done with the drunken disorderly. My favorite colors are white and olive or yellow, gold. Um, that's kind of around here. I find that those two colors seem to work very, very well. So that's that, man. That thing, it shoots around like crazy. Uh, it's super unpredictable about where it's going to go. And I think that erratic movement really entices fish to strike. So um, that is the biggest. Uh, moving down the line, I have another version of something that's very similar to the Drunken Disorderly. Uh, these are mini dungeons. Um, I got these from MFC. Uh, through my wholesale account with them. I have these in a couple different colors. I used to tie these myself, but um, you know, when you get them down this small, I would use this in a circumstance that one, I wanted to go a little bit deeper because this has dumbbell eyes on it, so it's weighted. Um, you know, the drunken disorderly, it's got deer hair on the top and there is no weight to this fly at all. So I have to use it with a sink tip unless I want to fish it really, really close to the surface. On the other hand, these mini dungeons um, have a lot of marabou in them, so they're going to absorb water, and they've got the dumbbell eyes, so these things are going to do a little bit more of a jigging motion, a little bit less of an erratic movement, but the thing I like about them is they're smaller. If I hold these things up, you can see right away um, the size difference. This one's almost twice as long. Uh, the Drunken Disorderly is almost twice as long as this mini dungeon, and I have those in two colors as well. I've got the barred orange and the barred white. I will have more of those in my shop um, as I can. The ordering uh, was limited this time around, so I'm going to get some olive ones and some natural tan color ones. Uh, and, and so I'm going to go through the rest of these streamers. I got two more to go through and then I'm going to show you how I rig them and how I fish them. Um, these I've done a tying video on this next pattern. This is the ZH2O. My favorite colors for this are obviously white, yellow, and then olive. And it has that gold zonker pattern on that. It's called the ZH2O. You can go back into my other videos. I have a tying video on this. I get these in different sizes, but basically there's lead wraps around underneath this mylar so what happens is it keels down the hook point is up which allows you to get right down deep along the bottom without snagging anything and then this zonker as it's wet kicks in the water um, very lifelike and very effective moving to my last fly flying through these get it flying through these yeah um these uh muddler minnows that um are marabou they've got marabou tails on them 
traditional muddlers don't have marabou tails. Traditional muddlers have um, the uh, mallard flank, much like these drunken disorderlies do. The thing that I like about the um, marabou muddlers is that that marabou gets wet and I think it counteracts the deer hair on the head. Where this stuff's hollow, you know that it holds air and it likes to float. Um, but the thing that I like about it is that this back end will hang down even more and you're going to fish just a little bit lower in the water column. My favorite part about streamer fishing is being able to effectively fish different water columns. And this is extremely, extremely important for you to understand. When you're fishing a streamer, those fish sometimes want it to hit, uh, they want it to go right into the right place so that it's an ambush uh, so that they can ambush it. Sometimes they'll chase it, um, but more often than not, at least in my experience, when I see a trout chase a streamer, um, unless you're like spay fishing and it's on the swing, when I see them chase the streamer, they don't actually hit it. I see them chase it all the way up to the surface. Um, I see it chased all around, but they don't actually hit it. The ones that I see hit shoot out and they attack it and it's done right away. Um, that's just my experience. You might have different experiences, but um, and so that's why it's so important for me to be able to fish the fly properly. All right, now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get my materials out. I'm gonna throw together one of those sink tips that I already have a video on. You can go ahead, it's like a sink tips 2.0 or something like that. But I'm gonna put one together here for you with one more added element. And, uh, and then I'm gonna tie one of these on and show you exactly how I fish it in the water. So my materials, right off the bat, um, I have a T14 airflow. Now, the weight of the airflow that I use, whether it's going to be like T14, T10, T18, they make them really heavy, is going to be how uh, based on how I want the fly to respond. If I run a very short but extremely heavy tip, it's going to drop super fast in the water and it might give it um, that jigging action. But then if I get a lighter one that's longer, I might be able to do f like more of a swing motion. Um, and if I go longer and heavier, obviously that thing's just going to drop straight to the bottom. I'm going to use the welded loop that's on the front of this just to start off, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get into it. This one, uh, I'm going to tie probably an average length for what I normally do, which is probably like an arm span for me. I'm short, so that's probably only like a little over five feet. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sink tip, and you're, I'm not going to zoom in here, so you're not going to be able to, to see this too much, but I'm going to go ahead and get into my tippet. I'm going to grab some 0x fluorocarbon. All right, right off the bat, fluorocarbon is abrasion resistant and it sinks. Um, and I'm not going to grab a lot of this. I'm only going to grab like a foot or maybe 18 inches right off the bat here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to nail knot this fluorocarbon. I'm not going to zoom in here. You guys know how to do these knots. I'm going to take and I'm going to use a nail knot tool here. And I'm going to nail knot this fluorocarbon straight to the end of this sink tip. Just like this, right? So I'm gonna get that wet, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put it right to the end of that. Oh, I botched my nail knot. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nail knot this floral carbon to the end of this sink tip, right here. So there's my nail knot tool. I'm not gonna zoom in on this. You guys will be able to figure out how to do these knots. So boom, there's my nail knot. I'm gonna slide it down to the end if I can. Nope, it's already secured. All right, so I'm securing that there, and then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna clip my tag end here, and I'm gonna clip this. Now, if I'm gonna use a drunken disorderly, or if I'm gonna use one of these mini dungeons, I will take uh, and I will put in line close to this. So like this is my, this right here is my sink tip. This is my floral carbon. Uh, I'm gonna clip that down just a little bit, and I'm going to use an Invisa Swivel. This is by a company called Aquatico. You can buy these in different pound test ratings. And what I have here is a 12 pound test fluorocarbon Invisa Swivel. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put it in line right after my sink tip. The reason why I do this is because I've had um, some of those drunken disorderlies and even some of those mini dungeons. I've had those really, really twist up my sink tips and the floral carbon uh, on the end of this sink tip. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting this swivel in line so that you can 
add a little bit more fluorocarbon now to the end of this. I'm going to grab some more 0x fluorocarbon here. And um, I'm going to grab some more of this now, maybe only another two feet. And I'm going to put this right on the end of the swivel. And what this is going to do is if I wind up in a situation where um, that that drunken disorderly, which it swims so erratic. I mean, it's doing this all the time. I think that's why fish love it so much. Um, but if it starts to twist, uh, it's only going to twist as far as this invisa swivel. So it's not going to cause my leader or even my fly line to twist up. So right here, I have this swivel. I have the sink tip. It goes down to the nail knot joint. That's not coming apart. And then it goes to my invisa swivel. And then right down here, this is where I'm going to attach my fly right at the end. I usually just use an improved clinch knot. And so that's my rig right there. Now, the distance between the end of your sink tip and your fly is important in a lot of cases because if you don't have a fly that automatically sinks, it's going to put a bow in your fly line. So it's just important to remember that. All right. So for the last thing I'm going to go over with you guys, um, after you have your sink tips made um, and, and then after you have the swivel in line or you've decided what fly you're going to use, different things like that, um, I also wanted to be able to give you guys a tip about how I fish these in certain circumstances. Uh, depending on how deep your runs are, I mean, there's rivers that I fish for brook trout or brown trout in runs that can be 10 or 12 feet deep. And then there's other ones that are super shallow. The ones that are super shallow, I don't need to use a sink tip. I can just throw one of these weighted little mini dungeons on or throw one of these zonker patterns on that have a lead core. Even these muddler minnows uh, for brook trout, man, I love fishing for brook trout on muddler minnows. It's so effective. Most people that I talk to will tell me, oh, my grandfather. I had a whole bunch of those in his fly box and uh, I have them, that, but I never use them. I hear that so many times and, and it's one of the most underrated flies that I, I think that exist uh, on the earth right now is a muddler minnow. However, uh, one of the ways and one of the tips that I'm going to give you using these sink tips, especially with these drunken disorderlies or these mini dungeons or any of these flies is that I will actually position myself uh, in the stream. Say this direction is upstream and this direction is downstream and it's a deep pool right here in the middle. I will take my fly line and I will cast upstream. I will immediately already have, actually, I'll already have some lines stripped out on the side here. So if the first thing is, is I, I, I cast up and then I drag my line and my rod tip across the top of the water and pull slack out the tip of my rod. And then I'll roll cast that slack back up on top of itself. Um, and, and some people, you know, will say, we'll use a pile cast where you cast and it stops and then it takes your line and shoves it straight down. And then there's a, 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 a pile of slack on the water that that way that sink tip will will go down. Typically what I find is with the farther upstream I cast and the more slack I can throw with like a roll cast over the top of it and get that line to pile up, this sink tip is just taking it all the way down. And so from the head of the pool, this thing hits the water and the whole time it's going down, 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 down. And when it gets down to about the spot that I think is going to happen, I throw an upstream mend. So my line comes up this way. That way, when I start stripping, it's not going to go downstream and come back around but I throw an upstream mend so that when I start stripping, this thing starts shooting up, back upstream. And it's really sweet. If you start practicing that, you can really get it dialed in. This technique actually proved to be so effective this year that I had multiple clients that pulled in a ton of really, really big fish out of some deep runs using these drunken disorderlies, using these muddler minnows, and uh, some of these zonker patterns. And when you can get that so that you can cast it up, you get an idea about where those fish are in the water column. You'll start to develop an idea of where your fly is when you start messing around with these different sink rates, lengths, and weights of uh, some of this airflow sink tip and then also these weighted flies. All right, guys, that's going to be a wrap for me for this video. Again, my favorite flies right now, they're always changing, are these uh, drunken disorderlies, mini drunken disorderlies, these mini dungeons, uh, the ZH2O, and then these marabou muddlers. These things are super, super awesome. 
Appreciate you guys for taking the time to watch these videos. Make sure to subscribe, share the videos if you found them helpful. And uh, I've, I'm just trying to crank out some of these tutorial videos that might help you guys out as I'm revisiting and getting jacked for the spring season. Hopefully it comes soon. Um, these streamer techniques that I'm sharing with you guys right now, these will be the techniques that I use when I'm on the water come opening morning, the first couple weeks of May for those big browns and big brook trout that are uh, holding in water, getting ready for those insects to start emerging, getting super excited if you can't tell. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.